2016, it must be time for Computex, the preview of what you're going to see at CES in 2017. You know, they, they did more than just talk about the products and the stuff that won the awards. They talked about some new, uh, well, I guess some new initiatives they're putting together here in Taiwan. So we're going to cover that. But first off, you made a list of everything they talked about. Let's go through it. Get yeah. through all the flowery stuff. So with Computex this year, they're looking at innovation and startup companies. And so they have something called Innovex. And Innovex is a, a, another, not really a division, but another sort of slant on specializing companies. You see, this year there are 23% more first-time exhibitors than ever. There's 1,600, over 1,600 exhibitors in 5,000 booths uh, from 30 countries. So one of the things that's interesting about this is they are really encouraging and almost pushing the idea of you need to come to Taiwan and set up your company because the government's going to help you, the city of Taipei is going to help you, and you have a huge talent pool here of people who just understand the way technology works, they're programmers, they're designers, uh, lots of industrial designers and that sort of thing. So there's a sort of a drive to say, hey, you've got a startup idea, you've got something going on, we've got all that here, and they're also working together with Innovex to put together some venture capital uh, funding for these companies, for the ones that are the most promising. So. A lot of it is, is, is it's really going to benefit Taiwan, so that's one of the reasons why here at, at Computex they're sort of pushing these ideas. Plus, they also say most of the future technologies, and they've even got a, you know, a futurologist here, saying most of the future technologies are going to come from small companies, not the big established companies. Yeah, yeah. Vito Dabari uh, is the futurist that was here, and his presentation was really interesting. He was saying that, you know, maybe, where he's suggesting that maybe in 10 years, uh, Taipei, Taiwan, might be an alternative for a Silicon Valley type destination because of things like the Internet of Things. With the Internet of Things, he said the rules haven't been, been written yet. And so he was talking about partnerships between a lot of companies and a lot of companies that may not exist yet. That there, there is not an 800 pound gorilla um, an 800 pound gorilla that actually goes with uh, you know the Internet of Things. You know we've got Apple and Microsoft and IBM. Those companies may not actually be the 800 pound gorillas of those industries. And the partnerships thing I think was really interesting because he sort of saw you know maybe that you'll have small companies and other companies that are working together for the Internet of Things. And so you know his opinions as a futurist I thought were really interesting. See, think about Taiwan and and, and if you guys have a startup out there, I. I think Taiwan may be worth considering because not only does it have all the things we just mentioned, but it also has manufacturing. So, whereas you don't have a ton of manufacturing going on in America now, you, you have some. Taiwan has a lot of manufacturing. It's kind of like the the best of a lot of different worlds. Well, it's it's where it's where east meets west. I mean, we're talking about China, and we're talking about all the manufacturing that's in China. But with Taiwan, it's more of you know a sort of a USA style. We might be a little bit biased because we're from the USA, but more of a USA style corporate culture. So it's literally where East meets West, and maybe not today, but in the future, it's sort of an ideal startup destination, an ideal Silicon Valley. So there's a big hardware overclocking thing that HW bought or whatever hardware bought or whatever. They're doing a big overclocking thing. I think it's sponsored by Intel and a few, few other companies. But uh, we're going to see 20 different companies represented here. Uh, Dan Kopp is going to be here. He's the one who uh, won. The, uh, the overclocking competition for the GTX 980 Ti Hall of Fame in uh, Wuhan, the one that Galax threw, pretty ridiculous. So he'll be here. That should be a lot of fun. We'll run over and uh, get some footage of that for you guys, so stay tuned for that. Yes. And what's next on the list? First time ever. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, we've got, you know, there, there's also the CPX, which is the business to business side of things, and that goes in with the uh, the whole startup innovation. And so a lot of what's going on at Computex is one company is meeting with another company to see where they can collaborate on things. And so it's not necessarily business to consumer, it's literally business to business. Hey, let's get together, let's compare notes, let's put it together, and then let's see what shakes out. And that's a really awesome thing to have culturally if you're going to say that you're into startup culture. We're going to take a look at some of the products here, just to give you an idea of what to look for this week. We're not going to do full coverage uh, of each individual product here, but you may get a preview and know what to stay tuned for. And maybe you'll say, like, hey, we saw a really cool Zotec product. Well, you better watch the Zotec video. Yeah, there are over uh, 80, 80 products that won awards this year, and these are really innovative products. And the ones that sort of survived the gauntlet here, you're definitely going to see at CES in 2017. We're going to walk through all the products at this thing, the HTC Vive. Innovative. Of course it's innovative. It's here. I don't see the Oculus. Do you guys see the Oculus? I don't see the Oculus. These are neat. So we've already seen this. Uh, Dell Edge Gateway. Oh, they're looking at something over here. What are they looking at over here? Uh, we've seen this before, haven't we? No, no. no it's, uh, they have uh, interchangeable heads. And so the really amazing thing with this is you can, you know, do 3D printing, of course, that works. But you can also swap it out for a laser head. That's what's on it now when you're doing this kind of etching. But you can also swap it out for a pen head and then do writing. It's like, wait a minute, why is this useful? 
if you're into making your own circuit boards, you can put copper clad PCB down there and draw the PCB on the copper and then use ferric chloride to remove the copper with the, with the drawn circuit. Make your own circuits, it works really well. Obviously you pinheads. Well, I have a device that can only do 3D printing, it can also do etching. Yeah. The Kangaroo mobile desktop. So this is your computer, all of it, all inclusive. I believe there's a battery in there as well because it looks like it's got a battery. And then it slots into something like this. And you've oh, got, you dirty slot. Yeah, you've got uh, USB, you've got power connection, and you've got uh, HDMI output. But then, hey, you know what? I need to go to my friend's house and plug into their base unit. This is a docking station. It's got network connection, USB, HDMI, VGA, headphones, and uh, power. And it's also got USB 3. And it's got SD card slot on the side. Power. It's uh, kind of nifty. One of the super fans at Land Syndicate actually had one of these, so I got to play with one of these even before the show, and I'm really glad to see that it's going to get the press and coverage that it needs because it's a really innovative device. A smorgasbord of IoT devices. Um, it's, it's hard to say what they're all going to be doing. We'll have to go, like, you know, actually check, out, check them out at their different booths. An infrared here, plug in. I mean, all this stuff's going to be just connected. But it doesn't, here at the event, this is a Bluetooth product. Um, it does not it does not say what this runs on. It could be Zigbee, could be I don't know. I don't even know. No idea. No idea. Uh, moving on along here. Hey, Thermal has got a mouse. I'm not even sure what sensors in that one because I haven't played with this one. This is the Vintage Z. But this is interesting over here. Take a look at this keyboard. This keyboard, yeah, it looks like Cherry MX. The switches are Cherry MX compatible. It's RGB, but these are not Cherry switches. You're looking at a Flare Tech switch. Now, it's made by Atomax, and flare tech switches are infrared. And one thing that's really interesting about this is it's infrared actuation. You can do 100 million clicks on these things. This has a nice clicky. It feels kind of like a softer version of blue. The travel distance, actuation distance doesn't feel like it's that far down. But uh, the interesting thing about these is when you build this, you don't actually have to solder each key to the board. You're able to pop off the entire key. So if you wanted to, you know, pull out the entire housing of each key, swap them out, if you wanted to do, like, you know, red switches on a part of the keyboard or blues up here for this, you could do anything you wanted with this thing. So you really could play with this. Uh, out of the box, it's just, you know, going to be a durable keyboard. It feels pretty nice and solid. We'll, we'll have to go check this out. It's, it's kind of interesting. I want to check out these new Flare Tech switches and put them to use instead of uh, just checking it out here on the table. Got to plug it in and see how it looks too. Okay, we really need a projector for the office, and this thing caught my eye over here because of the aggressive aesthetics. I thought maybe this could be something for gaming, and I was like, where the hell is the projection coming from? Oh, it comes from here, and it shoots down at an angle, so this is going to be a, a very interesting interesting throw on this. Also, a little, uh, just a very interesting design. So this is the Acer Predator Z850. We'll have to swing by their booth and check this one out, so stay tuned for that video. Okay, so this uh, this is kind of nifty. If we it's kind of like the uh, the old Nostromo or any of those uh, you know pad devices that are external to your keyboard that you can program to do all sorts of crazy stuff. This is all programmed. Each one of these is an OLED screen, and you can program whatever you want. It. Like so, I want to open Photoshop. I open Photoshop. And once I'm in Photoshop, I've got another preset laid out with all of my hotkeys for everything from cropping, text uh, selection, and it changes the tool in the application. If I minimize this program, or if I just click off, it goes back to the desktop preset. So then I'm here, I can open up Firefox, where now I've got a bunch of preset spots, like I can load up the CompuTex web page, or I can load up uh, Major League Baseball, or I could program Tech Syndicate. And it comes in multiple colors and a little more rugged design. I happen to like this one, because it's, wow, uh, nice. it's nice and black. I like this one as well. I like the silver on black. Let's get some of these. These are cool. Yeah. And it's called the Infiniton Smart Screen Keyboard. All right, so this is a peephole camera slash peephole replacement. So you've actually got the housing and this device it's actually got a camera it's all wi-fi enabled so you can have this projecting to uh you know a computer in your home that's constantly feeding or your office this is the other big thing you can put this in the door of your office so you don't actually have to stand in front of the door it completely changes the dynamic of any of those action movies where the person comes up and looks at the door they're very scared that someone's gonna be on the other side to shoot them and that's exactly what happens is they hold the gun up and as soon as they see the shadow across the uh, the peephole they shoot them now you don't even have to get in front of the door. You can see it from everywhere. Like, I'm not coming to the door. Changes the dynamic of all those action movies. Just saying. A bunch more cameras, but Wendell, you found something interesting here from right. Acer. So this is this is an Acer, you know, small form factor PC, an Intel Core i5. Looks like any other, right? Oh wait, what do I have here? Oh my goodness, I've got a graphics card. But look at that, I Legoed it together. How crazy is that? All right, I'm gonna set that down. Maybe I need more storage. USB 3, but also built-in connection here. Oh, and maybe I want a DAC. I want an actual, real nice, you know, an actual, real, honest-to-God DAC. 
still small form factor, but wow, that's really interesting. Uh, we saw this last year, but they made some really interesting new innovation, innovative updates to the Atom. Uh, this is the AR2. Now, this is a camera that's Wi-Fi that follows you. And one of the most interesting things about it is it can detect when you're behind it and it will actually turn around and follow you there. So really good uh, for, for you know home security and just, you know, we're probably gonna put a few of these in our office. The thing that's really awesome about this, other than the fact that it's one of the only things like this in the consumer market, is the fact that to install it and to power it, you screw it into a light socket. Now, in my opinion, that's really smart because you can hang it upside down from the ceiling in any light socket anywhere and uh, just let it monitor what's going on in the room. And since it's Wi-Fi, you'll be able to monitor it while it's monitoring whatever's happening on all your devices. Pretty cool. All right, I'm really excited about this right here. This is my Pebble Time Steel. This is the Blox modular phone. So Pebble Time Steel, it's got, you know, the idea of having smart straps, being able to connect to something here and the strap has some kind of intelligence to it that uh, maybe it's an extra battery or whatnot. Uh, but this guy has gone a step further than that. So each one of these chains in the, in the watch is a module so let's disconnect this here look at that easy to come apart all these little block devices we got extra battery we've got a flashlight you can see the flashlight here it's all controlled by the watch itself and then you've got uh, gps heart rate monitor and altimeter all built into the watch unless they like oh i don't need any of those things okay well then just get a strap and plug it in you're good to go but then you got the watch face on top or let's say uh you, they come out with a new one down the road and uh suddenly you're like you know i want the new watch face i want the new watch bit you can pull that out, replace it, and all of your modules still work. And if you don't want this module, you don't want that module, you don't have to get it. It's all completely uh, build your own. Build your own watch with all these crazy sensors on it. Something from my bucket list can totally happen, which is, you know, the Tesla automatic summon ability? So it's going to be like, hey, little buddy, you need to pick me up. And the Tesla would, would come and get you. And so for those of you that weren't paying attention, that's a reference from Knight Rider. Um, we got a couple more smartwatches here that actually um, look like regular watches. This one's a bit bulky for a lot of people, and some people are more into, you know, aesthetics than functionality because they're crazy. But, you know, if, if, if that's the thing, these are going to have a lot of functionality and some aesthetics. So there's the, just the Asus different Zen watches here. Pebble there, just for um, comparison. All right, so this is the Acer Liquid Jade Primo, which... We've seen before, and I think we might have mentioned last year, but it's finally here. And this is Windows 10 Continuum. Now, Continuum, if you're not familiar, is a technology from Microsoft where you're running an app on your on your Windows phone, or you're running an app on your desktop, and it all just kind of bleeds together. This is a desktop dock kit for your phone. That sort of, you know, this, it's bundled with this sort of desktop kit, and this desktop kit lets you use your phone like a desktop computer. And so you've got, you know, you've got your desktop ports, HDMI out and USB 3, so that you can use your phone like a desktop computer. In this case, this is going to be used with the Windows Continuum, uh, which is going to be part of the, I think, Redstone 2 update, which is coming in a few months. I don't know if you can install Linux on the, the phone or, or, or whatever. I'm, I'm sure it's not like out of the box easy to do that, but wonderful. I mean, I'm sure well, the Ubuntu phone had that kind of idea, but I wonder if you'll be able to install Kali or something like that on there. Well, this this is the Asus Zen Phone 2. This is x86, and some crazy people actually figured out how to install Windows 7 on this, and this has four gigs of RAM. So a full Windows 10 on a phone is probably just around the corner. Especially with Windows Continuum. Interesting. Zotac has got some cool stuff here. I can't wait to check out their booth because they're doing a lot. They're even doing SSDs now, uh, PCI Express SSDs. That is uh, the Zotac P, I believe it's a PI-221. And that's based on Intel's Compute Stick. But that's a, that's a full-on computer there, and that's HDMI on the end. So, yeah, that's uh, going to be awesome for Linux. Could be. I wonder if you can game on that. Could be a nice little thin client, too. Plug it into your TV, you know? It's a Skylake mini PC. It's a Skylake mini PC right there. That's kind of ridiculous. Interesting. Thanks to Corsair Gigabyte and Deep Cool again uh, for making our trip possible. We'll see you guys in the comments and in the next videos. Mm -hmm.